Today we talk about cats, house fires, and video marketing all in one episode. You're not going to want to miss it today. Our guest, Scott Simpson from Video Marketing World, will join us on this episode of Word of Mouth. Get ready to improve your mindset, increase your skill set, and expand your network. Follow along as the CEO of Master Networks brings you over a decade of business networking experience. Welcome to Word of Mouth with Chaz Wilson. TikTok. TikTok. Yeah. Are you on TikTok? I am, but only to lurk. I oh, don't really? post anything, no. <laughs> Why not? Why don't you? I don't know. I it's not really not really my speed. But I do like to just creep you on watch. everybody's. You just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just follow everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean you look at all the platforms, TikTok, um, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, like and a lot of the team here, the marketing team's been like, you got to get on TikTok. For years. I know. Well, <laughs> it feels like, right? Yeah. They were just, everybody was, you got to get on TikTok. It's the new up. And I, I, avoid, I didn't even want to log in ever. I didn't want to have an account. I didn't want to look at it. I'm like, I, last thing I want is another platform. And yet, now I'm on TikTok. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Uh, and actually I really like the platform to be, to be frank. I like it because there's a lot of tools and it's easy to use. And, and like from a video editing thing, it's pretty, pretty nice, uh, simple and easy to use. But, you know, as a business owner, the thing when, why we're talking about it is everyone in business has a message. They either have a mess they've turned into a message. They have a story they want to get out, something they're right. trying to share. And video is like one of the best platforms to do it. If it's done right and you can build connection to your community, you can grow your community, you can build leads through it. And I still think it's this thing that some business owners think maybe maybe video will go away, or, but it's not. I mean, video, we've talked about it on the podcast before. Yeah, a couple times. And we've talked about the fact that we do this podcast on video. We have a studio in here. We have videographers, editors. We keep investing in more equipment. Video is not going away. If you look at the platforms, they're changing the way that they even their algorithms are leaning, you know, heavy towards video. So, Instagram, we talked about that at one point too. They're prioritizing video. Right. Started as a photography. Now it's like they're. I think they're they have an identity crisis. They're not That's sure who they are. That's another point. <laughs> and and they're chasing this because video is the key. It's what exactly. You know, I look at what my kids do. It's all video. They walk around and watch videos all day long. <clears throat> video tutorials, video, other people playing video games. That that I still haven't grasped and understood <laughs> yet. That shows my age. But video is so important to a business owner. Uh, in fact, a couple months ago, a gentleman who runs a Video Marketing World, who's a member of Master Network, Scott Simpson, reached out and we, we started this conversation. And long story short, we became business partners in Video Marketing World, an event and a company that he's had for a number of years. And it lines up well with us because the the conference is for business owners uh, who want to understand how video can help them grow their business. And we were like, yeah, I'm in because we support business owners and if this is a way to support them. So today's episode, I wanna bring in uh, my now new business partner. I wanna welcome to the show, Scott Simpson. Scott, welcome to the uh, Word of Mouth podcast. Yes, welcome. Thank you guys for having me. It's a pleasure. So excited to learn more about video, and especially for our business owners who are watching today to learn how bit, uh, how video can help them grow their business. But I'd love to hear how you got your start, especially with like your YouTube channel and all the things that you're doing. Oh my. Okay. So let's let's go back. Yeah. A few how years. far? It's first ten, grade. ten years. <laughs> ten. <laughs> yeah. No, eleven years. So we we wrote a children's book in 2010. Okay. And um, and then in 2011, we followed it up with a with a a, a book for teenagers and adults, and it's a personal development book um, that has all these principles of success. And and so what I used to do was go around to chamber of commerce meetings, Rotary clubs, and and give presentations on the book, and then try to sell the book, but then also just try to leave you know with an inspirational message. And in 2014, my wife was pregnant with my son, and she's like, "You can't do this anymore." Um, I, I had just traveled to Portland. I came home and, and she's like, you can't do this anymore. I need you at home. Cause you know, you know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have kids. I get it. You get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> and so I was like, well, what, what can we do? Like there, how else am I supposed yeah. to get the message out there? Yeah. And I was like, oh, YouTube, the internet, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I started creating personal development messages on YouTube and putting them out there. And then um, I had one take off. It was like how to build confidence. It was like five five tips to how to build confidence. And it got like 50,000 views. And I was like, wow. oh my gosh, this is like legitimate. I, I've never spoken to an audience of 50,000 people in my life. Yeah. The most was like 
56 guys that mm. were all members of the Rotary Club. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so I was like, this is something that can work. And uh, and so slowly but surely we started building our following on YouTube and and selling books in the process. And and I was like, this is super simple. I can I can go downstairs, record a video, post it on YouTube, sell some books, and get back yeah. to work. And um, and then that just kind of snowballed into our our YouTube channel. It's got over 340,000 subscribers now. Wow. That's just wow. one, of, one of them. We've got a couple. And, so, and how long have you been, you said 10 years, 11 um, years? So we started on YouTube in 2014. It was okay. November of 2014. And then we we kind of hung up our hat on YouTube, on our on our family channel, on our, okay. on our channel in, in 2019, 2020. Okay. Um, things, a lot of things kind of started to shift on YouTube, and yep. I was getting back into business. My kids were getting older, and gotcha. they are like, Dad, we don't necessarily want to be <laughs> yeah. recorded all the time. Yeah. And so we're like, okay, how can I teach other people how to do this now? So that way I can create a business with it. And then then everything else was born. That's was, awesome. Yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, it's been so, so the family really got to be the test, right, of yeah. like all the things and yeah. <laughs> like how to use it, how to like what videos stick, what don't, what mm-hmm. doesn't, what, you know, what thumbnails, all that stuff. And so now you've helped uh, a number of business owners yeah. build their YouTube channel, but, but not just YouTube. I mean, understanding how video can be a platform to build their community, build their tribe, connect with their community. And so maybe just for a second, and we'll come back to YouTube in a second, but uh, just real quick, the why first, why is video such a powerful platform? And we talked about it at the beginning, you know, of like now I'm on TikTok and all these like, why is video such a powerful platform, and where where do you think the future is going for business owners with that? So, video is super important because it it kind of um, bridges a distance gap, right? You can you can understand somebody's uh, intricate habits yeah. through video, especially. I mean, on social media, on YouTube, if you post a thousand videos, I guarantee you that by the time you post your thousand thousandth you are going to be the most authentic that you've ever been on video. And the reason is because when, when we get on video to begin with, we're all trying to put on a show. Interesting. Um, we're trying to be a, the news anchor or trying to be the, the you know, the sham wow guy, yeah, right? It's right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about that guy. I, think. I know. I blacked him out. <laughs> um, but we're all trying to put on a persona. Yeah. But as you move forward, like you can only hold up, like, they can't hold up for very long. And then your authentic self comes out. The people who are following you really get to know who you are as a genuine human being. And that's who they fall in love with. And that's why it's, it's easy to build a following on really any social media platform if you put in enough time and effort with video because people, uh, they just they want to get to know you. And it's an interesting point. And I think the thought I have is the word, you know, I think it, what gets overused is influencer. You mm-hmm. know, I hear about these like, you know, my kids will even come and say, Hey dad, do you know so-and-so that he's an influencer? And I'm like, what does that mean? Like anymore? Like he influences what? And then I look at their videos and I'm like, that doesn't feel authentic. It feels totally staged. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's all choreographed and everything. And I think from a business owner, you, where you hit the nail on the head is that the authenticity and the genuineness of a business owner is, is who they're going to follow. Yeah. That's who they're going to fall in love with. As you said, and like, go, I connect, I'm like that, right? That's, Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And well, I, I always joke, but like one of the best things that you can do on video is when you're, you're all in professional mode and you're talking about your, your real estate listing or whatever, and yeah. then something distracts you and catches your eye and you're like, Oh my gosh, sorry, you guys, this is my cat over there. And the, <laughs> the, the person at home though, who's watching is like, they have a cat. I have a cat. And, and that's what bonds you. And so it's not that they care about your listing. They, they don't, most people won't. Um, maybe one person will, and that's right. the person who's going to buy the house, but, but most people won't, but they do care about your cat and they do care about you. And if you give them a reason to care about you and form a relationship with you, then you have won them as an audience member and they will remember you the next time they're looking for a house. You would relate to that person. Probably. Yeah. I remember all the zooms we did when we were in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were, when we were in quarantine and we we're all working from home and we were doing the zoom meetings all the, all the time. And We'd be talking to Elizabeth and a, a cat would like pop up yeah. right behind her and that like person. walk. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you would be, yeah, you'd be but like, that, we're friends. I know we're joking about it, but the truth of the matter <laughs> no, is true. like, okay, it's like that reticular activator. Well, you have cats, mm-hmm. you, somebody who's like, oh, brought up the cat in a video or whatever. You're like, I could connect with them because yeah. I have cats or whatever it yep. is. Yeah. Right? Like that's yep. the. 
Or it could be, it, my my Ford Windstar broke down last week. Oh my gosh, I still have a Ford Windstar. You and know, mine it's like broke it's down too. <laughs> 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 They're all breaking down. Yeah. They're all thirty years old and breaking right. down. Um, that's uh, but that's the key is yeah. like bringing in bridging the gap between professional and authentic, and peeling back a few layers. You don't want to go too deep. There is there is you know there are people who go way too deep on yeah. social media and they end up becoming you know. And, memes right exactly <laughs> right but but it, so l- let me just dive a little bit on this balance of that because no i think that's where i've struggled over the over time too is like the 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 self-talk comes and i think this mm. is what a lot of business owners come in they like who would really care about anything i have to say right like wh- who's going to care about my opinion of it or frankly and this is honest truth i think i'm pretty boring <laughs> Like, I just, I'm not like some people live these (laughs) lives that are just like, first of all, I think they're chaotic in my opinion, but that's how I view it. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty boring. Like my life is pretty regimented and and so on and so forth. And I balance, you know, church and work and football and on my kids and all that stuff. And like, but I just, I constantly think who cares? What would you say to a business owner? You, You do at least one interesting thing every day. Everybody does. Whether that's, I'm going to try out this new restaurant over here, or yeah. I'm going to drive a different route to work. And everybody has a story that can come from that one interesting thing that they're doing. Yeah. And, and that's what you share. And then you tie that into your business. I drove this route because I saw this, this uh, that th- there was a house fire over here. I wanted to go take a look at it. And, and wow, look at that. That's amazing. That whole house burnt down. It feels so bad for the family. Yeah. Um, they, need, they should buy insurance from me. Ah, there Boom. you go. There got you go. <laughs> Hope their cats got out. You know, stuff like that, right? Exactly. I we mean, get, we got dark there. I know. Sorry. That, sorry. Sorry no, about that. No, it's okay. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, right? I also think... So there's that piece. And I think there's people who probably are boring like me in business and they go, I'm a lot like that. That's how I like, yep. I don't do crazy stuff and I'm not out every weekend and stuff. No, I'm at home. I'm kind of a homebody. I, I build my life around those things. Oh, I can relate to that. And I think as a business owner, what you're looking for, and you already hit it right out of the gate was the authenticity to connect with somebody to go, I either I'm like that, or I could see myself, or if that guy could do it, mm-hmm. I can do it, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So then how does a business owner really get started? And like, is there a platform they should get started on first? And like, what, let's say I do zero video. I don't, I don't do anything. And I'm a, um, let's go to the real estate agent as an, as an idea you were talking about. I'm a real estate agent. I don't do any video. Where should I start? What should I do? So there's a couple of things that I, I would say. Um, and it, and it really depends on what platforms they're more comfortable with. I mean, obviously with YouTube, the, the best thing about YouTube is it's search oriented and, yes. and your videos live forever. Yep. And so if they're, if they're talking about real estate in Dallas and they title their video real estate in Dallas, there are going to be people who search that into Google, search that into YouTube, and they're going to find their video forever. Yes. Um, but some of the easiest places to grow right now are TikTok. Yep. TikTok, um, Instagram reels are yes. easy to grow. YouTube shorts are easy to grow. The problem with short form content is it doesn't have the stickability that long yes. form does. It doesn't allow your audience member to really get to get to know you and, and yeah. relate to you. They'll just laugh at your jokes mm-hmm. or, or might be interested in the subject sure. matter. But it's like if you want to build a community, it might not be the best, best, best place to start. So yeah. then Facebook, then we go to Facebook and what's cool about Facebook is that's where all of your friends and family are. Yeah. And um, and so you already have a community that's there that you can be talking to. And then you can you can do live video. I, I mean, there's yeah. It's really it's a it's a hard question to answer um, because there there's always a circumstance that would be like, yeah, this is the best platform for you. Kind of depends I, on what you're looking for. Yeah, it really. And does. the individual who's yeah. like I know for me. I, I kind of, of course, started on Facebook because that was sort of the first platform I was on. But I think for me, what I started shooting was Instagram stories because they did go away and I could I could <laughs> practice. And if it wasn't good, it's like, okay, it went away. No one could see it. <laughs> right? Yeah, that, that one wasn't very good. <clears throat> but it just gave me the practice of the muscle of like getting in front of a camera saying, talking about what I'm doing. So that by the time I went to lives or or youtube videos is a little more comfortable because i've done a little like you said that more authentic self starts to come through on that but i just think you just start somewhere yep yeah it's just a matter of picking up your cell phone and recording something 
And, and I, I would say, I, I think lives are a really good place to start because it teaches you how to articulate your thoughts quickly. Mm-hmm. And what happens a lot of times when business owners get on camera, they kind of freeze up with like, uh, oh, I, I didn't say that the right way. Let me redo it. And then they mm-hmm. redo it a hundred times. And then they find out that they didn't press record or that the, you know, the mic wasn't plugged in. So true. What's cool with lives is that you get what you get and, and it, but it'll teach you because, because you'll see the little counter too. you see, like, oh, there's five people watching. Oh, there, now four people are watching. Dang it. I got to step it up and get a little bit more energetic. Yes. And it teaches Instant you really feedback. Quick. Yeah. It teaches you really quickly uh, what people want to listen to and, and how to speak more fluidly. So highly recommend. And you live. can get engagement from the audience. So yep. we did a hundred and something live oh, yeah, during we quarantine. Did so many of those. I went a hundred, a hundred straight nights. And then I added some of my team. I can't remember what the totals were, yeah. right? But those lives were like, yes. And, and we would get feedback and in instant. And then, um, I did a live during the day. I don't know if you remember this. I did a live during the day and something happened on Facebook because I guarantee it had nothing to do with the content I was doing, but somewhere it got pushed. And all of a sudden it was like, I watched the counter and I remember I this. I do remember this. Yes. I thought it was a mistake, yeah. but it was real. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and it was like, it went from like 50 and then it jumped to a hundred and then 150, 500, 800, a thousand. <laughs> and I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> it got all the way to 15,000 people were on the live. And I, and I was like, I have no idea what's like, I you just, no do you idea remember, came do you remember no what the idea. subject you were talking no, about? I was, was interviewing somebody. I think it was even the old podcast we we're doing. It was live. It was a live podcast that we were wow. doing. That's and awesome. it just something in the algorithm hit and it was everywhere. That's <laughs> yeah. And then it, like I watched it, we got done and then, you know, it was great because we told people like, yeah, you can come on my podcast. We do it live. And then, like I'm like last week, I got 15,000 <laughs> lives at one. They're like, really? And then this person gets on. I have like 18. <laughs> so I, I interviewed Tim Ballard from oh, yeah, Operation from, Underground yeah. Railroad and they pushed it on OUR channel. And it was like, yeah, it, w- it went from like seven people to like 600 people like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, this feels great. Yes. I was born for this. Yes. Right. <laughs> and then the next week it went back down to seven. Yeah. <laughs> But you're right. The live, it gives you instant feedback, yeah. not just with the counter, but people comment and you can comment back. And so there's a lot of strategies. I mean, I don't think today for this episode, we get into all the strategy pieces, but in fact, because now we're partners, we put on an event together Yes, that we do get into the strategies. So you want to talk about video marketing world? Yeah. Yeah. So video marketing world is an event that specifically created for business owners. It's, it's for, uh, people who are, are interested in social media and they're just like, I see so-and-so doing their videos yeah. and I, I, my insurance agent's doing his videos. I need to be doing videos and they just don't know where to start. And so what's cool about video marketing world is it's, it's less of a conference and more of like a three day workshop where you are coming for very tactical information. We're teaching YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, um, all strategy, even some, e- we're doing email strategy, how to convert, how to convert your, your uh, video audience into paying customers through email. Um, we've got people coming in and talking about Facebook ads and YouTube ads. It's like the entire anything you anything you could want video related is is what we teach at Video Marketing World. So and it's again specifically for business owners. Yeah, so they can go to videomarketing.world and you can find the link to register and come to the event. Yep. But I think what's fascinating, why I was really attracted to this, is I think most business owners. Well, first of all, they, like we already talked about, how do I start? What do I do? There's that piece. But then there's the second piece, which is I still think there's people out there that are sort of resisting this. Like, well, you know, I still have a circle of people that send me referrals and I do all my business there. And it's like, yeah, if you don't understand that you're a marketing company and you sell a product and service, you, you are going to be passed. You are going to be old news pretty soon because there will be somebody in your industry that can come in share a better message and have reach through 15,000 people on a live and take your market share like that. So if you're not, if you're not poised for understanding and, and positioning yourself in video, you're going to be passed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an exposure thing. And, and yeah. g- going back to even like lives, right? People are always like, why would I do a live if I only have two people on that live? It's not about the two people that are on the live. It's about that live living on your wall for the next 24, 48 hours. Yeah. And people seeing your face and people recognizing that you're talking about your business and people remembering you. And, and even though you might only have two on the live, you might get 15 in the replays. And I have done business 
with 15 views on, on our live stream. Yeah. It's like, that's how easy it is to convert an audience member into a paying customer. It's just a matter of, of having the exposure. And if you have the exposure, then you're outperforming the yes. person who doesn't do video. Well, that's a good. So we had uh, Ken Walls was on our podcast recently, and he does a Grow Live Academy. He does lives constant, like every night he'll do a live. Although he's been, yeah, sick and and with COVID and stuff, and we were, you know, praying for a speedy recovery. He's doing much better, but he he so he's had this little hiatus, and people are like, "Where are you? We want to, mm-hmm. you know, like they're already now expecting him to. Where are you? We miss you, you know." But he's done so many lives, and he's gotten so good at it, and now he's got such a following that he's interviewed people live on Facebook that you and I just probably could never get in front of, but because he's done it and he gets these audiences and he's now he can invite people in or they'll, they'll even say, Hey, I want to get on your, your live because he has these massive followings that get on his lives. And he's, and he just literally turns on the camera and starts having a conversation with his audience. It's, I mean, think about the, the age we live in with this technology and there's no reason why as a business owner, you shouldn't be taking advantage of this. Yeah. Nope. And if you're not, why not? Yeah. And and usually it boils down to a few things. It's, it's, I don't have time for it. I don't understand it. Or it's going to cost me a whole lot of money in order to get set up. Yeah. And the thing is, is if you have 15 minutes while you're driving to work, you got time for it because that's all it takes. If you, um, if you don't have the, uh, if you don't have the money for it, it doesn't matter. You got a cell phone and everybody buys the latest and greatest cell phone now. So you got it. Yep. And, um, and if you don't understand it, it's it's as simple as come to video record. marketing world. We'll see. <laughs> it's as simple as pressing record, and then and then and then uh, honestly having a strategy behind it. But strategy is it's just it's just tactics. It's yeah. knowing best practices, yeah. which are very easy to learn as well. Yeah. So it's it's overcoming yourself though. Like it's overcoming your um, uh, what you perceive as like setbacks. Yeah. Or what you're what you're, and a lot of the times it's a it's a mental thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I think it's awesome what you're doing, what you're teaching and helping business owners. I would, you know, not only just highly encourage it as a business owner, but that's why I decided to become partners in this is because I see the value of it for a business owner. Like, again, we invested in a studio equipment, Mm -hmm. like, and you don't have to do that. I was able to do that, but that's like how much I believed in like where video was going. And I realized we just weren't doing enough of it and it's changed and been able to help us spread our message to the point I'll go speak somewhere and people go, Hey, I feel like I know you and I've never been there. I've never spoken to that group, but they feel like they know me because of the things we're doing on video or I've watched you or I feel like we're friends. I mean, I've literally had people introduce themselves. Hey, I'm so-and-so. I know you don't know me. I kind of feel like I know you or I feel like we're friends or we could be. It's kind of weird, but I get it because they've watched all the videos, yeah. right? Yep. And so, uh, listen, if you guys want to, we're going to put in the notes, we'll put where, how to get tickets to video marketing world and how to come join us, uh, at video marketing world. We'd love to have you. Come attend, hang out with network with other business owners, but come listen to people who aren't teaching theory. These are people who are doing it every single day in their little niche of video. And that's the kind of people you put on stage uh, at Video Marketing World. Any last things you want to share about Video Marketing World? I, I think that the biggest thing is, um, is that once you get started, it becomes easier and easier and easier to continue with it. And so come to Video Marketing World, learn how to get started, pick up your cell phone, hit record and just go after it. So we have a question of the day, Scott. We do this every episode. Sweet. So you get to, but we don't know what the question is ahead of time. Okay. Okay. I love it. So Katie's going to hit us with the question. What is one thing that you learned new within the last week? Go. Uh, oh Something my God. I learned new in the last week. I mean, I feel like I'm always learning something new, but I don't know if I could verbalize what it is. I learned my dad jokes aren't funny. My 16-year-old daughter does not think they're funny anymore. (laughs) (laughs) She does not. She's like, oh, that's so stupid. She, she, She said something about her kids, the kids in her athletic class or whatever. These groups were, these girls were running. It was a group of five. And I was like, that's odd. She didn't think that was funny. I'm like, you didn't get it? It was five? That was odd? No. See, it's not funny. What'd you learn, Scott? So I so it's not something like that I that I was educated on. It went slightly. I, I for the first time I ran I ran six miles. Um and it's the longest, furthest distance I've ever run. Yeah. And I, I think for me it's like I learned 
that I could do that. Interesting. Like, I learned that mm. I could work up to that. Um, yeah. That's awesome. That's good for you. I learned that the uh, wedding industry sucks, yes, and everything is uh huh. Yes. Everything is ridiculously overpriced. So I learned that. I was actually last weekend, but it counts as this week, right? <laughs> yes. So for all of you out there in the wedding industry watching this episode, bring your prices down. Bring your prices down. <laughs> Hook a girl up. Get her get her some connections. <laughs> you could do like a thrift store type of a wedding. You know, get everything at the thrift store. And budgets. Definitely yeah. could do that. <laughs> like, I could, could do that. Great idea. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>